Okay, so I've taken out my shelves. I've got a nice load of space in there. Um, you probably can't really see from the camera, but it's about two feet across um, from the corner over to that um, insulated pipe there. It's about 600 mil, and then that's probably about, I don't know, five, six feet tall, so plenty of height. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of fun trying to do the pipes down there because the bottom of the cylinder where I need to get to is below the level of this plinth which is above my stairs so I'm obviously going to have to wiggle some pipes around there and, and do something but that's a problem uh, for later so now that I've got all of that space to play with what I can do is I can lay out the components that I have let's move the box out of the way move that out of the way and basically work out if I have enough space um, to do what I need to do. Now I'm kind of, in my case, I'm slightly restricted by where the outputs are um, on this control unit. So that pressure relief output, the one on the side just under there, has to go into the top of this box because that's going to collect anything that blows off um, if the pressure gets too high. And then the fitting at the bottom, as you can see from the pipe, goes up to our expansion vessel. Now the expansion vessel um, can go round any way and that's because although it looks like uh, a big empty metal tank there's actually a rubber bellows in there and because of the pressure in the back end of the pressure vessel that rubber bellows sits quite close to this front end so there isn't really a lot of air space there what happens then is as the water pressurizes and pushes into that pressure vessel the rubber bellows moves back and increases in volume so there isn't a lot of air in there to worry about um, so I'm going to put that upside down just so I can get it in a bit closer Obviously because I'm using this flexible stainless steel pipe that I got from Navatron that came with the cylinder, uh, with the pressure vessel, it means I've got a lot of kind of freedom in how exactly that's going to go and that needs to match up with the fact that I've got um, a bracket for the uh, pressure vessel so all of that will need to be jigged when it's in place. Um, as I said this tank here is both a uh, collector for anything that comes out of the pressure relief valve but it's also the filling point so I kind of want that filling point there at the bottom to be reasonably accessible to that which is the filling point on my pumping station. Um, clearly here um, with a couple of bends in a pipe I should be able to get that in fairly easily um, and so yeah, and then the other thing is this air deaerator uh, is going to be on the 22 mil pipe that's um, coming from the cylinder and going to the pumping station. Uh, now, one thing I'm not quite sure about is the cylinder comes with 15 mil um, pipes because, like a lot of these solar systems, we tend to talk about low volume, high temperature, but for some reason, all of this stuff is kind of three quarter inch pipe and 22 mil. Um, sizes so I'm gonna to have to reduce that side of the deaerator down to 15 in order to plumb down into the cylinder uh, that end can stay 3 quarter to 22 just to do a little elbow um, up into there so that kind of should be fine I've measured that that's less than two feet across so I've got space to do that um, and it's much less than six foot um, in height so that also should be good so let's talk quickly about the filling. Now, one of the things that people get confused about, because again, most DIY people, they can get their head around a combi boiler. Now on a combi boiler, you have a filling loop from the mains cold into your central heating system. And then you either have an auto vent, um, usually you have an auto vent, which is a little bottle thing, which looks like this. And you're supposed to have this at the top um, or the highest point of the system and then what happens as the system fills and as air comes round it vents out of here out of the little cap on the top um, and then that automatically happens so eventually all of the air is purged from the system um, and obviously also you make sure that the pressure is high enough uh, in order to fill the expansion vessel so that's usually between one and two bars set by the plumber now it's slightly different uh, in a solar system and there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, we're mixing our fluid here with uh, this antifreeze, which is not something that you uh, do in quite the same way in a combi boiler system. So 
here we need to actually mix it's almost 50 50 um, or pretty much 50 50 antifreeze with water which is what this tank will be used for so we're actually filling from an unpressurized tank not directly from the mains um, so people start talking about things like hose pipes and filling loops and all the rest of it but the problem with those is it makes it much harder to get your antifreeze in now the other issue um, which again is a bit different than the central heating system is that those automatic bottle vents the ones um, like that are not rated at high enough temperatures to work on solar systems so the highest point of most systems including mine is going to be the solar collector itself and we've already said earlier that temperatures there reach you know potentially over 200 degrees celsius so the kind of rubber diaphragms and stuff in those vents will fail um, um, I'm guessing that means that stuff's going to start leaking out so if we can't put a bleed valve in um, we can do one of a couple of things I've seen some people suggesting the use of um, brass uh, venting plugs a bit like you have um, in the end of a radiator a bit like these things um, which don't have any rubber in them so of course they can take the temperature but that kind of misses a trick really because what you'll see the professionals do when they fill a solar, solar uh, hot water system is they'll use a pump to fill it and that pump has to do three things and that's what we need to remember it needs to fill the system in the first place which is fairly easy to do however we do it it then needs to purge the system and that means pumping the fluid around the system quickly enough to actually push the air back round to the bottom where this bad boy uh, is going to de-aerate it and then if you do that for long enough then the air is going to be purged without needing to use a bleed valve so that avoids the whole problem of how to get a bleed valve um, onto the collector one of the problems with having a bleed valve on the connector of course is that um, I don't know if you, you think about it but if the, the roof is at a pitch like this with the collector on the outside well the pipes on the top in order to go through the, um, the tiles are going to be coming down at an angle like this so the highest point is actually outside on the collector not inside in the loft so that implies your bleed valve would also need to be up on the collector which makes it really impractical to get to otherwise you're having to do some kind of um, you know cludge to try and get the pipes inside to be higher so that all the air drifts up to the bleed valve so again we avoid all of that problem if we used the pumped approach the problem with the pumped approach is you need a pumping station which you can hire from tall hire places although my local tool hire shop seems to be charging a fortune for it bearing in mind you can buy them for about um, four or five hundred pounds um, this company is trying to hire them out for a hundred pounds a day so it's a bit of a ripoff for probably 50 or 60 pounds I can get a pump which is cheaper than hiring one of those things for a hundred pounds a day um, the non-return valve is going to go right down by the uh, the feed so that's the top of the coil in the cylinder and I'll probably fit some kind of drain valve at the bottom not quite sure how to do that yet because again although that will be the coolest part of the system and hopefully would never be above about 90 degrees Celsius um, again got to be really careful with those rubber capped drain valves because again after a while I don't want it to start dripping and leaking out so I'm going to see if I can find a drain that has a screw cap on it so that at least then if it does fail um, it's not going to leak out of the bottom uh, I'm generally not going to need to drain it off I would hope um, except for maybe when I first fill it if I've got any little things that need tweaking but the good thing about using compression fittings all the way along is hopefully I'll, I won't need to drain down anything to fix any of the joints so just give them a little tweak with the um, with the wrench and that should be tight so that should be fine and then the only other thing that I'm going to um, bring into the top then is I have to bring in my twin sole stainless steel flexible pipe will come in from the ceiling from the loft and that will connect into the top there just under that gauge that you can't see it will be one end the other end will go down um, into here so again need some kind of adapter there with pipe clips and everything else and then the last bit um, which I haven't shown you yet but which I already have if I can get behind the door is one of these um, controllers so again I bought this from Navatron a few years ago and I bought it because I already have a wood burner that uses um, this controller so this is already um, capable of taking the solar panel as well um, and that will need some wiring up at some point 
but basically the temperature probes um, look a bit like this. I, I already have them. Um, and what happens is that goes into the solar panel um, up on the roof. The ends here um, will be extended by a wire that's already inside the twin sole pipes. So they do that for convenience. If you don't have twin sole and you're going to pipe it yourself, then you obviously need to extend that with um, ideally some kind of twisted pair. Um, probably get away with bell wire if it's not too long a distance. And then that will obviously go, in my case, through the wall and into the back of the controller. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start drawing out um, where these things are going to go. I'm going to drill some holes and I'm going to start getting this stuff mounted up.